Welcome to Celebrity Page TV. I'm Sonia Isabel in our New York City newsroom along with James Vaughn, who's keeping us covered out west. Hey, Sonia, we're tracking pop culture news from around the world. Here's what's on today's episode. When I met Oprah and was on the show, I was um, in my late 20s. Now Nate Berkus is a busy married dad launching a new show on HGTV. We're chatting with him and his husband, Jeremiah, about family, home makeovers, and a possible Oprah collaboration. Also, it's a really great thing to be able to come into this world. After a long delay, The Sinner is back. Bill Pullman tells us about coming out of retirement to try to solve another mystery. Plus, when were you going to tell us that you found her? Shannon Doherty's powerful new movie about breast cancer as the actress continues her own fight against the disease. But first, we start with big movie news. Here's all the dish on the return of James Bond. James Bond, licensed to kill. After a year and a half of delays, the new James Bond movie is finally out. No Time to Die, the 25th film in the Bond franchise, and the last one for star Daniel Craig, who celebrated with the Royals at the London premiere. I'm nervous as hell about showing it to people, because it's like it's a lot of work gone into it, but I'm incredibly proud of it. My favorite thing, and genuinely, is the people I get to work with every day. I think it's going to take me 15 years to try and unpick all of the great memories, but um, that, that really is, is it for me. No Time to Die is in theaters now. You made me think we were actually friends. I would never purposefully hurt you. Also new this week, the film Birds of Paradise. The drama centered around two dancers competing at a prestigious ballet school. Celebrity Page TV talking with the stars. It's a cutthroat world, it's a cutthroat environment and school. We really explore so much. Chemo, friendship, competition, sexual awakenings. There's loss, there's trauma. I mean, there's so much that we're, we're going into. I really don't want to spoil it, so just have to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you always follow the rules? No. Prove it. Birds of Paradise is streaming now on Prime Video. And how much I will pay you back. I don't want the money. What do you want? I want you to help me die. And for something completely different, there's the new dark comedy, Killing Eleanor. Annika Marks playing an addict who gets roped into helping a terminally ill woman near the end of her life. It's a movie about um, how we live and how we die, and um, about these two strange people finding this bond. Annika not only starring in the film, but also writing the screenplay. I can't just sit back as a female actor complaining about men not writing the roles I want to play. I, I have to, um, if I'm going to complain about it, there's a solution here, which is that we can start writing our own stories. Killing Eleanor is available on demand starting October 12th. And that's today's Dish. The Dish continues now with the newest headlines from Us Weekly. Correspondent Christina Garibaldi joins us. Always great seeing you. And let's start with the latest on Britney after her dad was removed as her conservator. Yes, that is right. Britney Spears is finally free after a judge suspended her father, Jamie Spears, as the conservator of her estate. But the fight is not over, with the source telling us that Britney is pushing full steam ahead to have her father investigated by the FBI for violating her privacy and threatening to attempt to extort her. Now, in a documentary, there is claims that Jamie and her security team bugged her bedroom to listen to conversations, and a source confirms that the FBI has opened a probe, but not a criminal investigation yet. And what else are you guys covering in the new issue? Yeah, we actually have some news on Ryan Seacrest, and it seems like his team is urging him to slow down. The host was noticeably absent from Live with Kelly and Ryan in late September, and we hear that he is absolutely exhausted and a source tells us that his team actually staged an intervention since he is in bad shape. However, another source does tell Us Weekly that there is no cause for concern, that he is still doing his radio show and is getting ready to head to Austin for the American Idol auditions. Thanks so much, Christina. We'll be reading more in the new issue of Us Weekly. Now let's turn to our new interview with a popular HGTV couple. Yeah, Sonia, Nate Burke has first appeared on our TVs doing renovations for Oprah, and now he and his husband Jeremiah are telling us all about their newest project. Well, that's when at the wedding I went, ooh, ooh, ooh. I think you went, oh, Lord. I think I did, I did. For years, we watched Nate Burgess do home makeovers on the Oprah Winfrey Show. We design and renovate people's new homes. Bada bing, bada boom. Now Nate and his husband Jeremiah have their own show on HGTV. The idea and the concept around the show is we're trying to introduce people to a design show, not about how to flip something quickly, how to make it transactional, but more importantly, how to make it personal. We're gonna make three 
three piles. The keeps, the maybes, and then <laughs> there's the goodbyes. The series not only about redesigning homes, but also about helping people learn to let go. Each family has a very different story. Um, we toyed with the idea of naming the show Starting Over because all of these people in every episode are, are starting over in some way. Lauren and Lisa lost their mom, Florence, and they were unwilling to sell their childhood home. For us as a couple, as husbands, knowing that our family doesn't look like every other family, which is a responsibility that we take not lightly, um, we went through the casting process and really found different families and different people that all had something we thought was really interesting to share. Yar! What does the monster say? Yar! The show also taking us inside Nate and Jeremiah's home, introducing us to their kids. But will we ever see Nate's old friend Oprah? Do you think Oprah would ever come on and like surprise somebody? Yeah. Okay. You know what? You may you may have just put that out in the universe. We'll take so, it and run. Yeah, we're gonna take that and run with it. You're welcome, guys. The Nate and Jeremiah Home Project drops new episodes Tuesdays on HGTV or streaming on Discovery Plus. The hit series The Center is back with new episodes, and so is acting veteran Bill Pullman. We talked with Bill and his co-stars to get a sneak peek of season four. She was scared that some guy was after her. The Sinner gearing up for suspenseful new episodes. You lied to me. Bill Pullman returning to the show as retired detective Harry Ambrose, whose getaway turns into a tragedy. This journey with this particular soul, troubled, troubled soul, um, you know, it brings out his em empathetic kind of nature to the extreme. The anthology series also introducing new characters trying to piece together a shocking disappearance. We are sworn to secrecy. We cannot reveal <laughs> anything except that I got to tell you, these scripts were mind blowing. All of us were walking around like, what? <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. One of the most thrilling things I've ever been part of because the writing is so complex. Jessica Biel, The Sinner. Jessica Biel receiving Emmy and Golden Globe nominations for her role on the show's first season. Now the star continuing her work behind the scenes as an executive producer and bringing fresh faces to the show. It's my first series regular role, so that's a very exciting thing for me personally. And, um, you know, I just knew it as a show of great uh, quality and intensity and to be able to um, have this be like my first uh, entree into being a uh, part of a cast for a full season was uh, definitely most thrilling. It's a dream role. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's so deep and that's the world that I really, you know, love exploring the mental health aspect of that. The Center premieres Wednesday, October 13th on USA. It's time for today's See Her Celebrity Spotlight. Each week we celebrate women in the entertainment industry who are bringing talent and authenticity to the roles they take on and off screen. Well, today we're shining the spotlight on a powerful new movie debuting just in time for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Here's today's See Her Spotlight. I have breast cancer. It'll be all right. We're gonna get through this, okay? I need you to help me find someone. Kelly Hu starring in the new film, List of a Lifetime. After getting diagnosed with breast cancer, Kelly's character goes in search of the daughter she gave up for adoption to warn her she may have the breast cancer gene. It's such a beautiful, beautiful film and shooting it was just amazing. I'm really sorry. For what? <laughs> Co-starring in the film is real-life breast cancer survivor Shannon Doherty. She is so full of energy and vibrant and, I mean, just fills a room. She is absolutely incredible and such an inspiration. Shannon also playing a role behind the scenes as one of the directors. It was directed and written by women, produced by women. You know, there were so many women on set and there was just this beautiful sisterhood. It was absolutely amazing. When I asked her what her plan was for the whole cancer thing she didn't seem to have one for kelly the movie's message hitting home and she's hoping all women will heed its warning it's so common i mean i've had it in my family my mother my grandmother my aunt i feel like there's almost no one who hasn't been touched by breast cancer at some point in their life um so it is absolutely important to get the message out there for women to get their mammograms to do their exams and um and really make sure that they check on themselves and and each other list of a Lifetime premieres Sunday, October 10th on Lifetime. And for more information, visit seeher.com. Still to come? You're my life partner, and I'm so freaking lucky, so. 
She's so cute. She's so cute. I'm cloud nine. Get ready for all the feels. Raquel and James join us to talk about getting engaged on the new season of Vanderpump Rules and later. It worked like magic and being in the industry for so long, this is what you pray for. From sister sister to baker versus baker. Why Tamara Mori Housley calls her new cooking show a dream job. It's all ahead on Celebrity Page TV. Welcome back. Netflix just dropped the new comedy series, Pretty Smart, and correspondent Rachel Smith talked with the cast for today's celebrity streaming. Hey, everyone. What's up? The guest room is ready for your sister. Oh, I can't believe Chelsea's moving to LA. I'm so excited. And because you're excited, I'm excited. And that's really exciting. <laughs> Greg, I'm a serious journalist, okay? So let's get down to it, let's be honest. You know, I wanna get a Pulitzer out of this interview. Okay, great. Were those ads CGI? Like, uh, the guy that uses like Zac Efron CGI, was that the same guy? You know what's uh, you know what's funny? Every single one of my friends has been winding me up for about, you know, since they saw the trailer and said, oh, it's CGI, CGI. And I laugh, but deep down I'm like, no, I did actually work very hard. You know, you're actually inspiring me. To work out? No, to have ice cream. <laughs> the title yeah. pretty smart because I feel like it says so much more than people realize. I mean, so many times people think women are either pretty or smart when hello, we can be both, right, Emily? Yes, we can. That's what yes. everybody attracted me to this is that I, yeah, she's, I, I can't remember the last time I was offered to play a role of an intelligent blonde. That's always nice. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite pretty smart ladies in Hollywood that inspire you? Ellen Pompeo, I think, is one of the most uh, badass women on the planet. I just started listening to her podcast. That woman is like running Hollywood. She has a podcast? Yeah, she just started her podcast. I think she's out of control. She's so cool. I could talk about her for ages. Um, I love Julie Bowen. She directed me in an episode of a, a show. Uh, our shows were sister shows, Modern Family in LA to Vegas, and she's so smart and also another badass, so cool. And I just love a funny lady. Uh, Diane from Cheers, I think I pulled from a lot for this, for this role. Thank you so much for your time. Really cute series. And uh, again, just congratulations on the message and the entertainment value. I like both. Hit me. One must close a chapter to thusly begin thy next anew. The new season of Vanderpump Rules is a trending story on CelebrityPage.com. Our social producer, Ricky Cornish, is chatting with two of the stars. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Sonia. James and Raquel have stuck by each other through thick and thin on the reality show. Now the two are taking the next step. You don't even understand the difference between a civilized They're conversation They're thirsty, thirsty and little girls that need a drink and I can't provide water for them. James Kennedy, not one to hold back on Vanderpump Rules. Done so much self-reflecting. Take your fucking words out of your mouth and shove them up your fucking ass. You gotta love Bravo, because they're so shady. They show you, James, and you're like, wow, I'm in such a good place in my life, everything is great. And then we see you like screaming at somebody. So like, what's going on? <laughs> well, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not perfect, okay? And I, I don't say that I am, you know, everyone's got their flaws and I'm still working out on the issues. Now, James focusing on a much brighter future with his fiance, Raquel. You got the ring on it and things are really moving in the right direction. How are you feeling? So happy. I feel so blessed to have this man in my life for the rest of my Aww. life, literally. I feel like the luckiest man on the planet, you know, and I thank my lucky stars every day to have her in my life. You're my life partner and I'm so freaking lucky. Vanderpump Rules airs Tuesday nights on Bravo. For more turning stories, head to celebritypage.com. Just ahead. The one thing that they have to have in common is passion. Why Tamara Mori Housley is so passionate about her new TV show that's coming up on Celebrity Page TV. Now we're heading south of the border. Celebrity Page travel expert Paula Froelich is here with the hottest ideas for your next vacation, Paula. That's right, Sonia. If you're looking for a tropical destination, then look no further than these fabulous properties with some major Hollywood mojo. Fans of SpongeBob SquarePants will enjoy the brand new five-star Nickelodeon hotels and resorts Riviera Maya. It's the perfect destination for families. Check out the signature penthouse suites. All of them can accommodate a family of seven, while all other Nickelodeon Riviera Maya suites can fit up to a family of five. Get your own taste of Bikini Bottom at this all-inclusive resort, featuring the Aqua Nick six-acre water park and countless opportunities for your kids to meet their favorite characters. Characters. Heading over to the Caribbean, the adventure continues at Nickelodeon Hotels and Resorts Punta Cana. Get ready for the slime! This property boasts multiple family-friendly offerings, including gorgeous pools and tons of fun Nickelodeon-themed activities in Club Nick. 
You can also check out the amazing Gourmet Village. It's full of terrific restaurants. There's even an adults only option when the kids need a break from the parents. Now, if you're looking for a more private experience, the Margaritaville Island Reserve Riviera Cancun is the perfect escape. Along the beautiful beaches of Cancun, guests are immediately transported to a tropical paradise. Escape the stresses of the world with the five-star amenities and delicious cuisine, including the world-famous taco boats at Rita's Taco House. You'll feel relaxed the second you walk into the lobby. Our final destination is the Margaritaville Island Reserve Cap Cana. Scheduled to open November 1st, 2021, you can be one of the first guests to grace the most beautiful beaches in the Dominican Republic. My favorite, just take a look at this spa. Sign me up. With a sprawling lagoon pool and dining options galore at the Gourmet Village, this new destination is the ultimate getaway for a much deserved vacation. Don't wait to plan your escape. Head to charismahotels.com to book your next trip. Leona Helmsley is in the news as part of the celebrity legal series Life, Death, and Money on Reels. Here's your first look. Leona Helmsley had a reputation for being the queen of mean. That's true. But she also had a reputation for excellence. She would be wearing a tiara and she would hold up skimpy towels and say, I won't settle for skimpy towels. Why should you? This marketing campaign of having Leona being the face of the hotels, it actually completely worked. Hotels prior to this really didn't have personalities, but the Helmsley Hotel did. Introducing the idea that the brand owner can become the brand itself was highly influential. It's later emulated by many other successful real estate moguls in America. We'll be watching Leona Helmsley, Life, Death, and Money, Tuesday, October 12th on Reels. When we come back, an amateur baker can compete against a seasonal baker. Move over, Paul Hollywood. There's a new baking show taking over the tent. That's next on Celebrity Page TV. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. Favorite us at CelebrityPage.com for your latest pop culture news. Now back to the show. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. Tamara Mori Housley can do it all. She's an actress and the host of a new cooking competition show. And today she's visiting our Celebrity Page kitchen. That girl has my face! We watched her grow up on Sister Sister. Bakers, your time <laughs> Now Tamara is taking charge on the new series, Baker's Dozen. The main thing is, you know, to put the perception out there that anyone can bake. With the pandemic, there were a lot of people who made pivots in, in, their, in their career. Five years ago, I was almost homeless. I taught myself how to make chocolates, and people said, you're not going to make it. I'm all, watch me. Oh my goodness, I have chills. I have goosebumps. The show pitting 12 bakers against each other in a series of challenges. Some of those bakers professionally trained while others are amateurs. Joining Tamara as a judge on the show. I'm Bill Yasses, former White House executive pastry chef. Show off. <laughs> we had a set of criteria that we use, which uh, is technique, execution, concept, uh, obviously flavor. I, I put flavor first myself. Damn, Bill. You ate the okay. whole thing? It genuinely is a warm, funny. This man right here, Bill, he's funny. Our 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 chemistry together just, I mean, it it gelled. It it worked like magic. And being in the industry for so long, this is what you pray for. That's really good. It's just a cookie. That's my line. Bill and I, we would <laughs> we would get attached. <laughs> uh so we were rooting. For them. We are in a sift off. I think I just won though. Sorry. <laughs> this just got real. But first, two of our favorite shows are back on ABC, and the stars are telling us about their brand new episodes. Make room on the couch. Oh my god, finally, something I can love around here. The Connors have returned for season four. This time they're bringing in some big guest stars and some major plot twists, including a wedding. We're getting married. <laughs> Dan and Luis are getting married. And that means family is changing. It means people are coming together. It means a whole new perspective. And like every family who's ever experienced this, it means people's emotions, excitements, and feelings are gonna come out in a whole host of different ways. Michael Fishman growing up on the series, now playing a dad to actress Jaden Ray. It's like family. We get to be together and just have fun together and be ourselves. The show is very relatable. And yeah, we throw a little bit of jokes in between, but like we're actually serious about these topics. Surprised to see me, right? 
This season, those topics ranging from religion to financial struggles. Michael excited to not only be acting on the show, but also directing behind the scenes. I earned my stripes, so to speak, and now I'm kind of off and running and, and in great company with some of our other amazing directors. The Connors drop new episodes Wednesdays on ABC. Can you marry me? Of course. I love you. Also on ABC, another hit show returning with another wedding in the works. This time, it's Sean tying the knot on The Good Doctor. Always more drama on The Good Doctor. You know, I think that's what the fans love, the drama of it all. It's like she's messing with us. Whatever's in her kidney is very real. This season, Bria Simone Henderson and Noah Galvin both bumped up to regular cast members, keeping busy with medical mysteries. Getting ass back is just like a, a true dream come true. And to be getting to live in such a delicious, fleshed out, rich world, such as The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor allows you to escape, but it also reminds you to feel. And it's okay and it's so and healthy to feel. Um, all of your senses will be ignited from the show. Sean, do you take Leah to be your wife? The Good Doctor is in Mondays on ABC. And that's today's Hollywood Wrap. From ABC, let's move to CBS. Yes, yeah, Sonny, the fall premieres just keep coming. And today we're chatting with the stars of a returning hit and a brand new comedy. That was a turning point in the Cold War. It was more like the beach volleyball scene from Top Gun. The sitcom United States of Al bringing the laughs in season one. The Taliban took her out. Kabul might be next. Al's family's there. But with a series centered around an Afghanistan war veteran and his Afghan interpreter, it became clear the recent news events had to be included in season two. They didn't shy away at all. I think if anything, they are even more determined to tell these stories. And those of us involved, I have to be honest, I didn't know a whole lot about the plight of Afghan interpreters before I got involved in the show. I hope you will join me in supporting the work of No One Left Behind. But now Elizabeth and her co-star is doing all they can to support Afghan refugees and to raise awareness on the show. Some real life stories about um, escaping Kabul um, during the most recent situation over there. Um, from that to uh, veterans and how they're feeling right now. I don't think I can do this. Listen to me. I am right there with you. Look for new episodes Thursdays on CBS. Why don't we just scare them away? We're ghosts. The line between the living and ourselves is one we should respect. Right after United States of Al is the new comedy Ghosts. When a woman inherits an old home, she soon realizes that she's able to see the spirits that haunt it. As you can tell from the title, it's about some ghosts and uh yeah it's it's a lot of fun and you know just in time for halloween right let's haunt these bastards out of here yeah! i would kind of equate it to uh what we do in the shadows kind of feel but also has like almost a ted lasso feel feel good um it's just it's a show that's gonna make you laugh and it's gonna make you feel things i'm just so excited for people to start watching be on the lookout for ghosts thursdays on cbs now to a new limited series that shines a light on the opioid epidemic. We talk with the all-star cast for a sneak peek at this brand new project. We began looking at something that could be big. Oxycontin. Purdue Pharma, they've been marketing the drug as something that's not addictive when it clearly is. The ongoing crisis of opioid addiction at the heart of the new series, Dope Sick. The show starring Michael Keaton, who also serves as executive producer, along with Emmy winner Danny Strong. What drew me was I was shocked, stunned, appalled, dismayed by how a company run by a single family could lie their way to creating a national health crisis. Purdue continues to lie about the drug safety to doctors, to patients, and the FDA. We have a major case here. The story focused on the pharmaceutical company that created the drug OxyContin, the communities impacted by it, and the government agents who went after them. I have had people in my life that were to absolutely directly affected by this. It's been a significant thing in my family. And so I felt like a narrative is a very digestible, easier way to get more people to follow a complex topic. With something as important and as pervasive as the opioid crisis is in this country, um, in order to really sort of get our arms around it. We're trying for the average viewer at home to see themselves and the people that they're seeing on television. The public perception of someone who might get hooked on say opioids was they're a drug addict, they're not like me. They should eradicate that doubt and 
make you angry. These people, my people, trusted me. I can't believe how many of them are dead now. This series also starring Caitlin Deaver and Rosario Dawson. Dope Sick begins streaming October 13th on Hulu. It's time now for an update on our favorite daytime dramas. For that, we're saying hello to Soap Opera Digest editorial director Stephanie Sloan. Hey, Stephanie, let's start with the news about a familiar face returning to bold and beautiful. Sean Kanan, who last played Deacon in 2017, is back on the scene, and the actor couldn't be more thrilled. Sean tells us he had the biggest smile on his face driving through the gates at CBS, and it feels like coming home. Deacon immediately teams up with fellow baddie Sheila, played by Kimberlyn Brown, someone Sean never worked with during his previous runs. Sean says he's excited. He's always been a fan of Kimberlyn's, both personally and professionally, and says this return is going to be a lot of fun. And you also have some storyline updates for us. Victoria and Ashlyn's wedding day arrives on Young and the Restless, but will she go through with it now that she knows the truth about his past? We're going to see Michael Mueller and Hunter King return as Kyle and Summer as part of this story, as well as Janice Lind, who plays Leslie. And over at Days of Our Lives, the devil wants a baby from Ben and Sierra, so Marlena will encourage them to start a family. Well, as always, thanks so much, Stephanie. We'll be reading more in the brand new issue of Soap Opera Digest. As Halloween approaches, get ready for some scary new releases. That includes the Netflix movie called There's Someone Inside Your House. Correspondent Rachel Smith talked with the cast. You guys just are who you are. You don't have any secrets. Let me ask you, this film is all about like secrets in a bad way. Can you tell me one fun secret about one of your cast members that surprised you during filming? Oh, um, Sydney does stand up. What, stand up comedy? Yeah, he's amazing. Hope they're serving fireball up in paradise, bro. Now I wanna die. I just talked to your co-stars and they just told me what your secret is. You do stand up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, right before I filmed There's Someone Inside Your House, I went up for the first time in like 10 years. Um, and then I, I went to go film the movie. But uh, yeah, those are my roots. I, I, I have done stand-up since I was like six years old. And that comic relief no doubt came in handy on set with so many scary scenes. I always wonder, like, when you're doing <laughs> these scenes and you're like, in these like scary settings, I mean, like, check, cornfield, scary farmhouse, abandoned high school, are you ever, even though you know what's going to happen, is your heart rate ever elevated and you're a little bit scared or tense yourself? Oh, yeah. You have to go there. So I, I've definitely had many moments where I'm like, this is chilling, actually. Like, I'm, I'm, this is, this is really freaking me out. Somebody roll a camera because this is real right now. My reaction is real. It does jar you for a sec because you're like, oh, no. Jesse, no. Marasia, <laughs> no. Like, what's going on? But it's just fun. I yeah. feel like we had so much fun just playing around and being scared and like you said, having laughs. It was a wonderful experience. And you can have fun being frightened as the new film is streaming now on Netflix. For Celebrity Page TV, I'm Rachel Smith. Still to come. And who doesn't want to live in the Christmas world 24-7? She's the woman behind Christmas movies on Hallmark, Lifetime, and Netflix. Now she's telling Celebrity Page TV about her newest story. And later... I'm checking... And I'm your friend to the end. Before we get to Christmas, there's Halloween. We're hanging out with the cast of the terrifying new series, Chucky. It's all ahead on Celebrity Page TV. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. If you're looking for a new book to pick up, we've got two recommendations. One will get you in the holiday spirit, and the other is from a familiar face. I hope you'll come tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? The Christmas Eve pool. If you've ever watched a Christmas movie on Netflix, Hallmark, or Lifetime and wondered who wrote that, the answer might be Christmas Karen. Now she has a brand new book called A Royal Christmas Fairy Tale. It's the first royal rom-com I've written since writing the Netflix movie A Christmas Prince. And it's about a hard news journalist. They say, write what you know. And she's actually sent to do a feature story in Europe to interview a family about their Christmas traditions. And she just thinks this is not her cup of tea at all. And when she gets there, she finds out it's actually a royal family. Merry Christmas, Camp! Karen turning her love of Christmas into a cottage industry from her own Christmas camp to her numerous novels and movies. And it's just another way to just escape and to feel good. We all need that feel good content right now. A royal Christmas fairy tale is out now. And from a royal book to a royal correspondent, Rob Shooter. Hi, Rob. Our friend Rob Shooter releasing his new self help book, The Four Word Answer, based on advice he collected from his former celebrity clients while working as a publicist. The Four Word Answer is my new book. Every successful person I've ever 
ever worked with, from JLo to Diddy to Jessica Simpson. They knew who they were and they knew it in just four words. It's the most important question you're ever going to ask. Who am I? If you can answer it in just four words, I promise you're going to be really successful. The four word answer is out now. Speaking of books, a legendary literary character is trending on CelebrityPage.com. Our social producer, Ricky Cornish, has the star of TV's Nancy Drew. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Sonia. The hit series, based on the popular books, is taking a terrifying turn for the new season. You got nothing to be afraid of. Just in time for Halloween, Nancy putting her detective hat back on for some haunted new episodes. What are you hoping mm -hmm. people will take away when they watch this new season? Oh, uh, well, lots of spooks, hopefully. Hopefully we still got the horror down. And of course, we have more mystery. Uh, that's what we're all about, right? And uh, more ghosts. Definitely more supernatural, more ghosts. And for the book lovers out there, Toon G. Kasim teasing that a perfect season is coming for OG Nancy Drew fans and newcomers as well. You know, there's a canon of books that has its fans from all ages. So it's fantastic to be able to reta retain so many of those, even though we've done something drastically different from what the books are, obviously. The ghosts are very real in our Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew drops new episodes Fridays on The CW. For more trending stories, head to CelebrityPage.com. Just ahead. Look around you. It's the World Series of Slaughter. The stars of the new Chucky series tell us why this new version may be even more terrifying than the original. That's coming up on Celebrity Page TV. Today's big premiere isn't a movie, but it's actually a movie museum. And the world's biggest movie experience will change everything. The Academy Museum of Motion Pictures is now open. The people who bring us the Oscars, building this 300,000 square foot campus in Los Angeles, housing the treasures of film history. Stars like Lady Gaga and Cher turning out for the opening gala. For your own look inside, ABC broadcasting a special hosted by Laura Dern and Tom Hanks, Tuesday, October 12th. Welcome back as we head into the busy winter season. A relaxing cruise may be just what you need. Stars like Kendall Jenner and Maluma are hitting the high seas on stunning trips. We're packing our bags in today's Hollywood Living. An all new way to set sail is here as Virgin Voyages makes its long awaited debut. Think about this as a boutique hotel on the high seas designed specifically for an adult only market with fantastic restaurants. Six different restaurants get to go to a different place each night. And these are restaurants that you would want to go to, restaurants that you do enjoy in Miami and New York. But it doesn't stop there. Virgin Voyages bringing guests many forms of relaxation with top tier entertainment, delicious restaurants, and endless benefits included in the trip fair. And we had great time, as you can imagine, bringing all these designers together, working out how to make sure the spaces flowed, but equally um, gave, the, gave the customer choice because we've got over 21 different eateries on board. So we wanted them to feel different. So it was that choice and that variety that we wanted to create across the ship for, for our sailors, as we call our customers. You can book your next destination getaway and learn more at virginvoyages.com. The popular comedy Young Sheldon has returned to CBS and Ranker.com is telling us all about season five and what else is watchworthy. Young Sheldon, the prequel series to the sitcom smash hit Big Bang Theory, is back on CBS for a fifth season. As new episodes following the exploits of boy genius Sheldon Cooper as he enters high school at the ripe age of nine premiere each week. What will fans watch as they wait for new installments? Watchworthy has some TV recommendations that Young Sheldon fans are statistically more likely to love. The first show we're recommending to fans of Young Sheldon is The Neighborhood. The odd couple in this lovable sitcom is made up of auto repairman Calvin, played by the legendary Cedric the Entertainer, and Dave, an oblivious Midwesterner who moves in next door, played by Max Greenfield. As Dave tries to charm Calvin, audiences are won over by the neighborhood's broad humor and willingness to poke fun at cultural differences. Finally, we're recommending The Sinner to those who love young Sheldon. The Sinner was intended to be a limited series when it premiered in 2017, but rave reviews from viewers and critics encouraged USA Network to renew the show as an anthology series. Now approaching its fourth installment, the show places Detective Harry Ambrose, played by Bill Pullman in charge of solving a different bizarre mystery each season. That's all the time we had this week, but don't worry. Young Sheldon fans can get more recommendations personalized to their specific TV tastes on the Watchworthy app. Comedy's biggest TV legends are in the spotlight next week on Reels. Here's your first look. Secondly, do not write on the wall <laughs> as it takes a lot of work to erase writing off of a wall. Now, men, there are a few things we ought to...
Barney Fife soon emerged as the funniest character on television. Don brought all these emotions that Barney felt. He brought them into himself, and then it would go into his mind, and then I could see it in his eyes. We'll be watching Lucy to Andy Griffith, TV's favorite sitcoms, Saturday, October 16th on Reels. When we come back... Chucky. He's gone. We're getting in the Halloween spirit with the cast of Chucky, next on Celebrity Page TV. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. All right, this guy has always freaked me out, and now the world's scariest doll is back to terrify us yet again. We've got an inside look with the cast of the new series, Chucky. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend till the end. He's our so-called friend who's been killing it since the 80s. Barbie, eat your heart out. And with a bride and even a seed, fans have been following Chucky's horrors through eight films. Now the killer doll moving to the small screen in his new show, Chucky. The one thing that the series can do that uh, film can't um, is uh, to, to really explore a character in, in great depth. I was also thrilled at the prospect of having eight hours of story to fill because that gave us an opportunity to delve into characters and relationships to a degree we'd never been able to before. Don said, oh, I'm doing the Chucky television series. And he goes, and you're going to be in it. And I was really excited that, you know, I'm still going to be a part of the Chucky legacy. You're going to see a lot of things that perhaps you didn't see in the other series, but it definitely is a continuation on um, Tiffany's journey. When I found out that I was going to be on the show, it was just super crazy. I'm so happy to be part of it. When I was in elementary school, just like the kids who watched the Chucky movies, those were the cool kids. Like he wanted to be those kids. And so it's just so surreal, like being on the series now. To do it as a TV series, I think works so darn well. It was an overall great four and a half, five months uh, of uh, nostalgic goodness. Chucky premieres Tuesday, October 12th on both USA and on Sci-Fi. Still terrifying after all these years. All right, thank you, James. For James and the team, I'm Sonia Isabel. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week here. And of course, we always have you covered on celebritypage.com for your daily trending stories.